my what it look like world granddaddy beats back at it um this is another what i call a garnish session a garnish a garnish session is um it's not a full cook up you know what i'm saying it's not like a, i'm making a, an entire beat here on um on live for you but this is a beat that um I did this beat maybe, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. And what I want to demonstrate here, because I was messing around with this a little bit earlier today, I think I finally got the um I think I finally got the 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 side chain thing to go down right. Um if you saw yesterday's um Garner session, what I was trying to do, and a Garner session, by the way, that's that's just, you know, I, 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 I go back to something that I've already basically finished the beat and maybe I just tighten up, you know, some of the mix a little bit. You know what I mean? Maybe I might add a, a, an effect or something or a, a calibrate the effect. Just something to tighten it up a little bit. That's all a garnish, a garnish session is. It ain't a cook up. It ain't a full meal. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, putting a little parsley on the side. So, um, yeah, I think I finally got the side chain thing that I was talking about in yesterday's garden session to try to make that the kick come a little bit cleaner and more clearly through the, the 808. So, um, let me just, I'm getting this camera in the right. I went and I got a, a, a brighter light cause I don't get good natural light in this, in this, uh, in my living room here. So I went and I got another, um, another lamp and I positioned it behind me. And hopefully it's not going to put no glare on the, the computer monitor. And it doesn't seem to be that is a good thing. I'm also trying to properly position this damn camera so you can see as much of this monitor as possible. You see my, my monitors, one of my monitors there, my Edifier monitor. Shout out to Edim Edifiers North America. Those are the, um, the R180Ts right there. Got those joints for 100 bucks, man. Great buy. And, you know, I got my, my pyramids, as you can see. You know what I mean? So that the energy is 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 nice and balanced. My creativity flows flows properly. I'm on it like that. Shout out to the ancestors. And um, so I got this track here, Escanor, and I'm gonna try to show you exactly what I did to make the kick sound tighter, all right? This session shouldn't be nearly as long as yesterday. Because I think I basically figured out what I wanted already. You hear the strings. The strings are, um, I sampled them. I sampled them from um, Ghost Pack. They, a, a string ensemble that they did. It had a 120 tempo. I adjusted it a little bit. I, um, what did I put on this shit? Nah, I just put some reverb on it basically and just changed the pitch. Alright, so you hear the kick, you hear the 808. Not the cleanest in my opinion, and I think I can make it sound a little better. So I'm gonna work on that in a second. But, um, yeah, this is a beat where, you know, the melody is a sample. It's these strings right here that I got out of that folder. And I just sampled the first eight bars of the, of, 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 um, of the string melody. It's royalty free. Um, I got my 808 here. I got um, the Octane plugin from Slate Digital. Shout out to Slate Digital. Using that slap bass that you heard. Also playing during the hook. You know, some hats, a clap, kick snare, some little laser effects, you know what I mean, some open hats, so basically, what I want to do though, is I want to focus on this part of the beat, because this is where we got that kick, and that 808 coming at the same time, let me just isolate for a second, I'm going to turn it up a little bit more, maybe it'll help you hear it better. It's not awful as you can hear, but I just I, I'm thinking and I'm hoping it could be a little bit better. So what we want to do, right? And let me just make sure I got this position properly so I can zoom in and really let y'all see it. See exactly what I'm, I'm, I'm what I'm going to do. Alright, boom. 
So as you can see, here's my 808, my uh, 808 track number two and my kick track number six, right? What you want to do is you want to come over here and you want to highlight the track where your kick is. Then you want to come back over here to the 808, right? Don't highlight the track, but on the 808 track, you want to come down here to where you see this little white, um, you see this little white arrow pointed upwards, right? You want to right click that and you're going to see this little box here and it has some options. It says route to this track, route to this track only, side chain to this track, side chain to this track only. You want to side chain to this track. You're going to left click side chain to this track. And now you see this, the, you know, you see the connection here. That's basically, um, you know, the kick is, is, is going to be coming into this and giving information, feeding information into this 808 track, right? Then what you want to do, and pardon me, I'm just going to try to make this a little bit smaller to fit as much of it into this, into this, um, frame as possible. See if I can get a way to let you see the, the effects rack as well as the two. Let me zoom out a little bit and that should help y'all be able to see it all. As you can see, right now the kick track is highlighted. I've already side chain. Um, I already got the side chain going from the kick over to the 808 track. Then I'm gonna highlight the 808 track, and I'm gonna come over here to the um, to the effects rack, and I'm gonna add the fruity limiter. All right. Let me see if I can resize this fruity limiter, make it a little smaller. It's not, it's not really going to cooperate, but we really need to focus on what's going on right here in this area, right? You're going to come down here in the bottom left-hand side of the fruity limiter, and you're going to click on where it says COMP, C -O -M -P, that's compression. What we want to do is we want to make it so that every time the kick hits, the 808 gets compressed. So basically what's going to happen is every time the kick comes, if the kick and the 808 are, uh, are playing at the same time, every time the kick hits, the sound of the 808 is just for, you know, for, for some milliseconds, it's going to lower. It's going to compress, it's going to get squeezed down and lower so that the sound of the kick can ring out over the 808. So we're going to click on compress, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to this little box right here that says side chain. We can either, because there's only one thing that we have side chain. We can either left click and just, you know, scroll up until it says one, or we can right click and it'll only, like I said, only one thing is, 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 is a side chain. So you just click on where it says kick. All right. Now you've made the connection there. You have the, uh, the limiter, which is in the 808 track is now reading the kick, right? We're going to come over here to the ratio. I personally like turning the ratio all the way up. This is a personal individual thing. You will have to play around with these knobs until you think you're hearing what you like. I come over here to the knee. I also put the knee around 60, 65% somewhere in that neighborhood. Right? So wherever inside of there you think you, you, you hear it nice. And I don't know if y'all can hear it, but as soon as I come from basically zero and I come over here like in that 60% area, I can already hear the kick coming with a little bit louder or cleaner of a thud, right? Then I'm going to come over here to the threshold knob. And I'm going to take the threshold. And if I turn it all the way down, you hear how the 808 is being distorted? Because that's the compression pushing down the sound of the 808 when that kick is striking, right? I'm going to turn that back up some. So this is with the threshold basically at zero dB. And when I pull this threshold down, for me, for my ear, and for this personal track, because it's an individual thing that you're going to have to play around with to see how you like it to sound. But when I get it down to like this minus 25, minus 26 dB area, it sounds like it's punching real hard to me, and that's what I want. 
what I might do is I might take the release on, on the compression and I might actually turn that down. Cause I wanted to, I want the the the, the kick to come through and then immediately re release that 808 back to where it was as quickly as possible. Let me see. Actually, I might uh, maybe I might put some of it back. I think it's like the compression release time is at 82.15 milliseconds right now. And I think I like that. But the only way to really know if you got what you like is you got to come back. And you got to turn everything else back on so that you can hear it in the context of the mix. So let me just stop that. Let me make sure that everything is, is back activated again. All of the, the um, all of the different channels or tracks here in the mixer. I love the way that sounds, man. I can live with that right there. I like the way that sounds, but I'm the type of dude that I can never leave well enough alone. I always gotta fuck with shit. So I'm just gonna see what happens when I mess around with this release time a little bit. I'm gonna leave it there at that 82, 82.15 milliseconds. That should sound tough. The name of this track, by the way, is called Eskinor. I was putting um, I was putting some of the more recent beats that I've completed up on my SoundCloud today. Oh, by the way, man, I gotta get in the habit of doing this, man. For the cats that I be posted, for the people who check out this stuff when I post it up on YouTube, please hit that like button. Please, please share if you're liking it, and please subscribe. Yeah, but um, the name of this joint is Eskinor. Um, as soon as I get done with this live right here, I'm going to upload it to um, onto SoundCloud as well. My SoundCloud is Granddaddy Beats. The YouTube channel is also Granddaddy Beats, G-R-A-N-D-A-D-D-Y-B-E-A-T-Z. Appreciate everybody that, um, I got another follow on SoundCloud today. Shout out to that person. Appreciate everybody subscribing. Everybody, um... Following me on, on Instagram at Granddaddy Beats, really appreciate it. Right. Let's run that back and see how that sounds. Got some interesting little sound effects on this joint. I wanted it to be a track that kind of builds up, but I still had to find some things to throw in there here and there to try to, you know, still keep it interesting. I'm trying to get this EP together this summer. Hopefully I'll have it all ready to go next month. If um, you've been watching some of my other lives, y'all seen that, that, that white box that I got in the corner. I'm gonna use that box to kind of make like a recording chamber around my microphone. So hopefully I can get some nice, good, clean vocals out of there. Yeah, I like that. And I'm gonna do this EP this summer.
like that bass that I got playing um, underneath the 808 during that hook too, man. Shit sounds tough. and chunky. I like the way the high sound along with all of the deep bass. Shout out again to Slate Digital. Got this on um, this little uh, effects plug in here called uh, Fresh Air. It really brings through the highs nice and clear without any distortion. I just I changed the preset on that fresh air. I'm gonna put it back on that um, pop presence. The other one, the shiny one, was a, a little bit. The highs were a little bit too 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 bright for me. I don't know if that's the right word or not, but it's, it's just was ringing out a little too much. Yeah. All right. I like that. I can live with it. Thanks for checking me out on this Garnish session. This is um, Garnish session number two. I'll have these from time to time if maybe I finish a beat and, and maybe I want to go back and touch it up or something like that. Um, probably, I think the next session I want to do will be a full cook-up, man. Probably going to do a full cup cook-up. I don't know if it'll be today, but if not, if not later this evening, it'll definitely be tomorrow. I'll do a full cook-up with y'all again. Um, the first one I did was a boom bat beat. I might try to do something. I might try to do like a like a, a drill style track or something like that. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Shit. Sometimes I start a beat off with a certain intention, and as the music starts coming out of me, it just takes me in a whole different direction, man. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, man. Um. Again, if you haven't already, if you're looking at this on YouTube, you haven't already hit that like button. Please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share. Um, this will be uploaded to, to SoundCloud probably in the next 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, appreciate everybody checking out my SoundCloud. Please follow me there as well. And, uh, follow me on Instagram at Granddaddy Beats. One.